I love the push-up of this wave, the vision denial, so that this Wukong rotation can come through. Owner is unseen yeah. so far. Sweeper timing, pretty nice, as the hook is going to connect onto the Tom Kench. Flame Chompers don't actually go off, because Kyle's able to get that flash off in the nick of time. Well, um, especially when you've got a troll coming from behind the turret, looking to try and lock this one down. All right, can this dive actually work? Is the flash... Still available here for Crocos. Nevermove is going to connect. Faker is on a merry jaunt as Close is going to come on in with the Shifting Sands. Yeah, Vision of Empire is only going to see the Vision of First Blood going over to Close. Yeah, wave underneath his turret. Close are able to uh, close the gap a little. Close is going to get a turret plate uh, at this stage. Grabbing them is up. Well, you're usually taking a fair bit of damage here as well as Carrius is getting poked down. Red White Guns here for Prince are so scary. As Faker has demonically ascended, there's the Emperor's Divide. Some semblance of control back in this game as Abyssal Dive comes down. It's a nice little knock up there from Carrier, but Moonlight Vigil comes down here and Prince is doing so much damage. The hook is going to connect. T1 going to group up here for Herald. Well, Cask is going to go entirely wide here as Faker is going to turn up. Looks to try and lock down a kill and I think he should be able to. The Demonic Ascension is going to help out first. The first kill for T1 will go over to Ona. Snap of their fingers, they get a pick and they're yeah. back online. No, it's really nicely done, as I don't think Croco had any idea what was going on, um, because Faker just walks on up here, and they'd already walked a little bit too far forward, and yeah, Dove, absolutely nowhere that he could go. I think the expectation here is that Faker shouldn't be allowed to ever have enough control of the lane. Certainly does. Prince is pushing here for this bottom lane, though, as uh, Croco is rotating down, and Gumiushi does have Carrier on the way. Flame Chomp has come on in there as well, as now Prince trying to lock down the kill under the Jinx as the Devour comes through and all too easily. I don't want to call him a shot caller per se, okay, hold on, Closer has Flash. Yep, Never Move does come through here as well, holds onto it for as long as possible as the Emperor's Divide Shifting Sands is going to get Closer, and it, it just becomes extremely comfortable to play if Faker and the Wukong start to get ahead. Owner already has one kill. Well, Hook comes through here as Croco is going to need to subjugate, does do so, but is going to still be taken down. Owner picks up that kill, now Closer's trying to get the autos through, but doesn't have enough mana. to get another plate down here towards the bottom side though, so that's definitely good news if you're a Sandbox fan but now carrier going for even more Zaius finds the glacial prison and this is the kind of follow-up that we've learned to expect from t1 and finally that's a nice sidestep there from closer who i think almost did it accidentally as all right gumishi's gonna have to flash but croco's making his way in moonlight vigil comes down and prince locks up that kill very comfortably they take the turret as well as the cyclone will come in now Ona, can you get any more out of this as fake is going to come down Ona will fall but can the cleanup actually come through prince now trying to fight it out against Carrier, Faker against Dove and Croco together, and he's losing out on the trade. Carrier's gonna go down, there's the cast to divide the fight here, try and keep Closer alive, who manages to walk it out, gives him the thumbs up as well as this will be taken. My God, what did Closer have for breakfast? I mean, I just sent by himself, and that meant that Closer was given his opportunity to escape. Now Croco's gonna get engaged on Emperor's Divide to try and split up the fight, but still, they're able to take down Croco, and now Live Sandbox, no way to stick around for this one. Surely belongs to T1, never move. And this is gonna be a, another charge coming through from this Herald. Well, Moonlight Vigil comes down, it's a lot of damage. The hook connects onto the Tom Kench, but he just wants to eat that Grey Health, and he's gonna be pretty happy. Great Devour there from Kyle, who spits out Prince. And the Jinx is already up. being taken. Look at Dove. 
He's just in the back line murdering everyone. What is going on? It's so many kills over to Prince. It's a triple. It's an ace. And it's an ace for Liv Sandbox. And Closer was top lane. Devourer available. There's great health up. And you are really forcing a fight here. Now we're going to go back to this one, which we did see the Emperor's Divide. Low impact here. Croco does not get to really use Subjugate to any real value. Does get picked off here. Nice snipe coming through. But this fight is over just there. Now they really want to force the issue here and try to get this inhibitor turret down. But look at how little hits. Remember, Azir is not here. The hook uh. comes through, but turret's still up. Turret's still up. Baker's pushed away. Doesn't have his ult up here. Cyclone, not good enough. Look at Kyle, saves Prince here, he's got the shield. Zayas still chases, turret's still up. Dove with the stopwatch. This was beautiful play from Liv Sandbox. And T1, massive overextension. No reason to hard force this. You get a hook with the with the Blitzcrank, you see what you can get. You do not need to be between turrets. Oh my god, Kyle is too good at this game, Wolf. And he's too good at Tom Kenshin. Yeah, man. I regret saying I didn't think it was as good of a pick now. Uh, yeah, I mean... It, He's so good at Engage that I completely understand. As we're straight into another fight, Zayas is going to go down. Prince gets another kill. He's 7 0 and 3. As Kerry is going to get knocked up, that's another one. Make it 8 0 and 3. He's legendary. Oh, and that last fight. Oh no. Oh, Ona's going to no. get knocked up. Dove finds himself a barrel as well, as Ona has no, no other option other than to try and get as much damage down as possible. And Live Sandbox. I just picking T1 off. Closer's like, I do I, Closer's like, do I want to run or do I want to kill? I want to kill. <laughs> yeah, he, he does definitely want to kill as he puts up the Sun Disc and Zayas makes it back to Faker. So he's going to be all right. How insane it is the turnaround here for Liv Sandbox. We compare round one to round two with how these two teams are playing. And it's it's moments like this where Zayas and everybody's tunnel vision on killing the 80 carry, but it's a Tom Kench comp. Yeah. It's like throwing the Sejuani ult at Sivir when she has Spell Shield, which we saw last game as well. This is T1, not in their perfect headspace. You can really see it in their play. They are not playing up to their normal standards here. And getting punished like this, I mean, this is just good proactive play from Liv Sandbox. But you're out there as Wukong trying to hold a wave. Guma wants to so extraordinarily gigantic. And when he has a Tom Kench as well, Prince can basically frontline. We've seen it already as Croco's going to face check. Okay, well, can they actually kill him? As he's got Subjugate, there's a Devour there as well. Close is going to turn up. Zayas is fed to Prince. And now Fake is going to get put back. Also, fed to Prince. Prince is just lapping up the members of T1. 11 kills now as Closer dashes in. That might have been a step too far, but he does have the stopwatch or his onions. I'm not entirely sure what it is at this stage. Where they fall apart at the end. Closer very alone here. Yeah, Dove also a little bit out of position as the Baron is going to be taken down. Oh no, looking for his opportunity. Dove, flash, body slam, gets to safety. What is this? Empress Divide on turn three, and it's a massacre for Liv Sandbox. Prince is so safe over the wall. Immediately, it's a double kill as T1 are getting routed. Gumiyushi, the last man standing, and Liv Sandbox may complete the 2-0 right now. I think they will. Guma getting just chumped down by a trundle. Oh my goodness, he's underneath the turret. He does not care. Uh, Kyle might also die, but instead, uh, it's just going to be the Jinx falling that's an ace. Sandbox, yeah, they pick up the ace, and they are going to win this game. They're going to win this series 2-0 against T1 and claim sole possession of third place. A 23 and a half minute victory against T1, our second place team here in the LCK. They made it look easy. K is leading into playoffs because right now it's not definitively this team on your screen right there, T1. It may in fact be Liv Sandbox at the end of things in their last meeting here in the second round, Robin. They it's just trashed on him. Do you know what's crazy as well, Wolf? We just watched the KT Liv Sandbox series. It was one of the best series that we saw, honestly, throughout this whole season. The quality of play was absolutely fantastic and it was much closer than the series we just saw here today. Definitely an off day for T1. You have to say that. You can't judge a team purely based on their most recent best of three, but still certainly um, worth some eyebrow raises as Prince 